Hey guys, welcome back to some more reviews. I am Horrorboy Force 5, aka Nate Murphy, the Explorer 4 here. Welcome back to some more reviews. And um, today we're reviewing Resident Evil Degeneration, which came out in 2008. Now, the movie gets a 6.6 .6 on IMDb to buy Makoto Kimya. And um, if you guys have some over here doing a review over here because I actually did a review for Land of the Dead uh, earlier. I shot, I shot the review three times, and all three times I kept messing up. You know, I kept messing up facts, I kept stuttering, I kept, you know, it just was not going that good. And plus, when I rewatched the video while I was getting ready to rewatch it, um, because I rewatched some of my video before I upload them to make sure that everything went okay, because there's been times in the past where I've recorded videos and there'd be no audio. The camera just messed up. There'd be no audio at all, and um, I, I went back to go and rewatch the review, and I noticed that as the review progresses along, you can actually see like a sunbeam, like it was right here, you know, a sunbeam, and it just kept growing and growing, and like half the screen was covered in a sunbeam, so it got really annoying. So I decided to review that movie for you know th for a little bit later on this week because I didn't want to review it four times in a row. So I decided to review this movie instead, Resident Evil Degeneration. Now, I will probably review one of the live-action movies next year, uh, maybe the first movie, because I'd say probably the first movie my favorite out of those out of the live-action movies. But Resident Evil Degeneration, I think, is, is basically how the live-action movie should have been. Because live action movies sort of, you know, strayed away from what Resident Evil was. And Resident Evil was all about being in this place, walking around, collecting items by yourself, atmospheric, you know, thunder and lightning, zombies everywhere, suspense and, and scares. Um, grant, the more recent games are kind of more action now. Uh, Resident Evil 7 kind of looked like it had a little bit of suspense to it, but I don't know if it had zombies in it. You know, it didn't seem like it had zombies in it at all. Uh, but the more recent games are more about action than anything else. Um, but I feel like this is how the live action movie should be. You know, and you actually got Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield in this. And they're both voiced from people from that from people who voiced him in the games. I believe the guy who voiced Res I believe the guy who voiced um Leon was from Resident Evil 4 and I believe the 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 girl who um voiced Claire Redfield was from Resident Evil uh Code Veronica X. Um which I actually really enjoy that game. I'm not even sure why everybody I mean not everybody hates that game, but it's not really a Resident Evil game that's talked about a lot. But I actually really enjoyed Resident Evil Code Veronica X. And imagine this being basically a giant cutscene. I mean, you take one of the Resident Evil games and make it pretty much an hour and 38 minutes of a cutscene. That's pretty much what this is. It kind of reminded me of that. Um, but, you know, in a good way. It's not a bad way, but in a good way. You know, and the movie's a very fast-paced action horror animation film. And the animation for its time, 2008, is very good. And I like the idea of it taking place with an air in an airport. I like the idea of it taking place after Raccoon City, and you know the guy who played Leon and the girl who voiced um, Claire did a good job. Um, some of the side characters I you know thought were pretty decent, like the little girl did a good job, um, and um, the guy who pretty much becomes the G virus monster at the end of the movie um, did a decent job. So you got decent voice acting and really good animation for the first time. And it's very fast paced. I really enjoyed it. It's what the live action movie should have been. I thought that um, Makoto Kimya did a good job directing the movie. You know, it's a very well animated film. And it's, I'll keep saying it, it's what the live action movie should have been. Because you look at Resident Evil, you look at Resident Evil Retribution. And you look at Resident Evil Afterlife. Um, Resident Evil 1 I enjoyed. Resident Evil 2 is a fun time for me. Um, Resident Evil, Af uh, not Afterlife, Apocalypse was a pretty fun time. I actually really really enjoyed the sequel, uh, Resident Evil Apocalypse. 
Um, Resident Evil 3 Extinction was pretty decent, but after Resident Evil 3, things started going downhill. Because the series really didn't make sense, and even from the first movie, um, I really enjoyed the first Resident Evil movie, and I enjoyed the sequel, Resident Evil Apocalypse, and Resident Evil Extinction was pretty decent. Even though I enjoy those movies, um, they still were not like the games, if you think about it. You know, there is zombies in there, but the first movie and the second movie and the third movie, even though they had zombies in there, it wasn't really as atmospheric as the game. It really, it really, it wasn't, it wasn't even, it, it, besides the zombies, it was hardly even similar to the games. So, I view this as sort of what it should have been. And what it should have been is had Leon and Claire the main stars and not Alice. Even though I thought that Mila Jokovic did a good job in the first three movies. But after that, started getting really bad. But this movie, you have Leon and Claire as the main stars, how it should have been. And, you know, pretty much what's happened is it takes place after what happened in Raccoon City. Um, and it takes place at the Harvardville Airport. And Raccoon City has pretty much been exploded, um, bombed, it's gone. And... One day, the virus ends up escaping from Raccoon City, and this airport goes into quarantine. You know, they got that great scene where they're in the airport, and, you know, they're seeing this protest that are going on towards this uh, guy who I guess was sort of responsible for the virus getting out. And you got this character, which I'm going to see if you guys can see it, but you got uh, this character right there. He's pretty much uh, walking around, doesn't really talk that much at first. And then you realize that, you know, he's the one who's responsible for this happening. And he's the one who, you know, later becomes a G-Virus monster. And the beginning of the movie, you got the airport outbreak, which is really cool. I mean, zombies, you know, at first you got these people protesting. You see people in zombie masks. But then they had that great scene where they go up to a real zombie, they try to arrest it, and the zombie bites, of course, the security guard. And, you know, it basically, you know, one person bites one person, and it leads on to an entire airport full of zombies. And the zombies are well done. They were well designed. I mean, they were just well animated. And the animation, like I said, it's for its time was really well done. And it still looks pretty good. And... Pretty much Claire Redfield at this airport, and she's trapped inside of it as quarantine. They send in Leon Kennedy inside the airport to get Claire and the survivors out of there. They do on their way out of the airport. Some people die, um, and they get Claire and the people out of the building. Pretty straightforward so far. And then you get to the end, towards the end of the movie where, you know, Claire goes to this laboratory, finds out that it's pretty much run by Umbrella. She goes inside. Leon finds out that the long-haired dude, um, pretty much he's the brother to uh, his friend who's a SWAT team member. Her brother ends up being against, you know, Umbrella. So he goes into the Umbrella laboratory and injects himself with the G-Virus. It's a really cool idea, and I really do, and I really do like how they include that in this movie because it was from Resident Evil 2. Um, and granted, I mean, Resident Evil Extinction had a scene where, you know, he injected himself with the G-Virus, but it made more sense to be in this movie than it did in Extinction. Extinction, it was just sort of like they threw in the G-Virus here. It was done well. He goes into the laboratory, injects himself with the G-Virus, and becomes a G-Virus monster. And it's a really cool design where it's like an eyeball on the shoulder. Um, really, really cool design. And pretty much grows in this huge creature and you got that great action scene where Leon has to fight this giant creature and you know he's shooting it shoots these things and the floor pretty much falls down and kills the uh, creature and you know pretty much him the SWAT team girl and Claire they all live although I really do wish that Claire had a little bit more to do because you think about it all she did was when she's in the airport um, run away from zombies, she really didn't fight the creature that, she didn't really fight the creature at all, I don't think, and they find out, 
that I don't, I don't think actually the long hair do I think he was like he was against Umbrella, and yet at first you think it is him that caused the outbreak, but then you find out there's this guy with his glasses on, pretty much working for Umbrella. You find that he's responsible for what happened, and after they're done killing the G virus monster, they hunt down this dude that's that's got glasses on. He's he's working for Umbrella. You know, Leon and Claire and the SWAT team girl, they hunt the guy down. He's getting ready to sell the G-Virus or the T-Virus, something like that. And they end up hunting him down and arresting him. And then you find out that, you know, Claire and Leon and the SWAT team girl, they are they all go off, you know. And pretty much in the movie, it's very straightforward. It's very basic. It's very – but then again, it's very well done. It's very well animated. I love this movie. I mean, it's just, it's a pretty decent, pretty good animated zombie movie. And, I mean, it's got everything that you would want from a zombie movie. You got blood. And it's got everything that you want from a Resident Evil movie. I mean, you got atmosphere. It's scary. It has an act it has actual suspense. And it does have action as well. But you also do have elements of horror in there. And it was what the live action movie should have been because the live action movies, they were more about action than anything else. You know, and maybe the first movie had a little bit of horror to it. The second movie was more about action. The third movie was more about action. And after that, it started getting really bad with Afterlife and Retribution. But this has action, but it has atmosphere, it has mood. And the animation was really well done, it deserted very well. By Makoto Kimya, I did a good job, and I really enjoyed this movie. I actually really do want to watch uh, Resident Evil: Damnation. Um, but as far as the features go, you get a look at the Resident Evil 5 video game, and I do remember when this was coming out. Actually, I think I was about eight or nine years old, and I do remember, I do remember when this was new, and I remember a lot of you know people talking about this movie. And I do remember when I watched. I remember when I watched it back when it came out. And I really liked it. Um, and you have some great animation. You know, it's it, it's it is what it is what the live action movie should have been. So I'm glad that Capcom made this. Huge fan of this movie. I think it's better than the first. I even though I enjoy Resident Evil, the live action movie, the first one, um, I still would say that I enjoy this more. Um, like I said, even though I do enjoy that movie, I enjoy this more because it is what the live action movie should have been. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, director did a good job, has a good atmosphere. Um, if you're a fan of Resident Evil movies, I mean, it's, it's got everything that you would want. Hey guys, I know this was a little bit of an awkward cut, but the camera turned off, so I'm just going to edit this into there real fast. But like I was saying about the live action movies... Um, and what's good about this animated movie that's way better than the live action movies is that in the live action movies, Claire Redfield, Leon and Chris Redfield and Barry Burton, they're all pushed to the side. Like, like that sucks because they're actually from the video game. The bad thing about the live action movies is that they sort of just push those characters to the side. And I'm like that, it just sucks because they were actually good characters and they were important characters in the games. But yet, in the live-action movies, they get pushed to the side. So it, it, it kind of sucked. Um, but, um, sorry about that, guys. You guys can hear that. But, um, yeah, I just figured I'd add this part into there real fast. Uh, but the, the bad thing about those movies is that pretty much the important characters from the video games are pushed to the side. You know, and it's about Alice. And Alice is just a made-up character that... And in those movies, Leon and Chris and Claire, they should have been the lead. And Jill Valentine. But no, it's about Alice. And it got really annoying. Because, like, why why is Leon getting the crap beat out of him in Retribution? And then um, Claire Redfield doesn't do anything. And, and, and that's what I like about this movie, is that Leon and Claire... They're both in this movie. They're both the leads. They do. They're really important. They they do a lot in this movie. They're not just side characters. They're they're the leads, and it's a pretty good movie. So I really enjoyed it. 
So I figured, guys, that I would add this part in there because the camera turned off. But, um, yeah, Resident Evil Degeneration is actually a well-done movie. I really enjoy it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching my review for Retri Resident Evil um, Degeneration. I almost call it Retribution, but that movie freaking sucks. But thanks for watching my review on Resident Evil Degeneration. And thanks for watching episode 4 of The Week of the Dead. And I'll see you guys on the next uh, review. Bye, guys.